ones. Okay, this is yours. Okay, now look here, look here. Go ahead. I'll wait. Your soul keepeth his word in him. Really. It's the love of God perfected. The love of God perfected. Uh -huh. Was it not perfected in the beginning? God's love is love. God is love. Right. Why would it say perfected? Perfected in us. It comes to fruition and it comes to, um, the word escapes me, um, manifest. It is manifest in us. It is perfected. It is matured. It is come to full fruit. Our functioning in that love, right? Yes. So doesn't that denote that even the pure and complete love of God requires response on our part Absolutely. in order to be completed and perfected? Absolutely. Carol says hey, good morning or hello. Good morning. Hello. Hey, guys. I have to open this door. I'm burning up. Why am I all of a sudden burning up? I don't know if that's gonna help me. We have cool evenings and cool mornings now, but sometimes this old girl still gets hot. Hello. How are y'all? <laughs> Paul in his message Sunday morning shared a scripture, 1 John chapter 2, verse 5. It's not part of our Bible study today, but it was one of those moments, you know, when you're just going along, happy as a lark, listening to the message, and then there's a word that pops out and says, oh, wait a minute. What exactly does that one mean? And it's the word perfected, which means complete. But still, I think there's room for study there. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. The whole book of 1 John. But I mean that particular that verse with that particular word. Depth. God's love perfected. Depth. You're looking down a hole or a canyon and you need to find out what's down there. I do that a lot. His word is that way. It's just, I don't care how long you've been studying the Bible, there's more. And if anybody tells you they know it, they know the Bible, they know what it's saying, back away slowly. That's kind of a sign that they have not <laughs> studied it yet. Because <laughs> my goodness, there's so much. So much there. You know, that was, that's a good point. And one time it occurred to me that the wisest man that ever lived wrote the book of Proverbs. It tells us he's the wisest man that ever lived. So if we think we can read a proverb and think, well, that's good wisdom, that quick, go back and look at it again. Yeah. There's a lot more depth there that you haven't grasped yet. Angie, when she was homeschooling the girls, used to, uh, there's 31 chapters in Proverbs, and for their morning devotion, they used to read a chapter on whatever day of the month it was. If it's the seventh, they read Proverbs 7, and that's a good uh, daily thing. And you can go through it again and again and again like that, and you still, you can't believe what you're seeing again. Because Proverbs has got a lot of depth. That's what I'm think, thinking is we think we grasp something the first time and then, you know, we read it again 10 years later and we think, I already know that. But if you think that, you need to get out of that habit of thinking, I've got that. You know? That's right. I've got it. Because no. you don't got it. Nope. Look at it again. Yep. Are we getting, is people here? I can't tell. We've got nine people watching, and that's the ones that are actually... Um, See who's commenting so I can say hello. Good yeah. morning, good afternoon to everybody watching, whether I see your name or not. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. I see Terry Monet. Is that how you say your name? Monet. Terry? Monet. Do you, do you know Terry? I hey, don't know. Hey, Terry. Her. I know Terry. Okay. She's a sweetie. I see Stacey. Silas watching from Africa. Hi, Thank Silas. you, Silas. And Carol, what did Carol say? Carol says, my chief always taught us that there are words between the words in the Bible, and that's true. Oh, that is true. Word. And I always, that was my thing. I always said, read between the lines. Yeah. And read Silas, between the lines. Silas, thank you for watching. We've we've uh, appreciated your ministry for years, and 
have have great respect for you as a pastor over there in in your church churches. And what a beautiful family. Yes, he has. I'm telling you, beautiful. So we've been connected on Facebook for several years with Silas. If we've missed anybody that's that said hello, and <coughs> we just um, we love y'all, and we're so glad you're with us. And I hope the Facebook thing works because. Sunday, we had like 14, and two seconds later, the, the broadcast went off or something. Then it came back on, and we build back up viewers, and then it, they drop back down, and I think they're having trouble. They're having trouble with the broadcast staying on. We've but had some network issues. There's lately. nothing we can do about it, y'all, and I'm so sorry. I hey, haven't Donna. actually gotten your... Um, Sunday message up yet because I've got to figure out how to splice those three yeah, videos it, it together. It dropped several times. Hopefully this Bible study won't drop. Hopefully. Now should I drop the camera a little bit because it looks like we're... High. We're high. Okay. Or closer or something. I don't know. Let's we'll see how that does. Is that better? Well, we'll see in the delayed Well, broadcast. you watch the comments because yes. I can't see them. Okay. Okay. So today, <laughs> do you want to start in prayer? I do. I like it when you do that. <clears throat> I do. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word. I just pray that you would anoint Angie as she teaches and brings forth the word of God. Give us the Holy Spirit to interpret for each of us. And Lord, help us to understand with a, a receiving heart today. In the name of Jesus, I ask it. Amen. Amen. And we are continuing on in our, what are we supposed to do now? Bible study. What are we supposed to do now? When we figured out there's things that have to be done, there's things that have it's things that are happening in the world. We've gotten some revelation on some issues. We realize that we are moving forward. What what are we supposed to do? What's the next step? I, you know, all of us have a different life. We have a different realm of influence. We have different uh, relationships and and things are going on. There's there's widows here. There's uh, divorced ladies here. There's ladies that have never married. There's ladies that are married, been married forty years. There's newlyweds, um, working outside the home, working inside the home. Uh, that we we just run the gamut with the ladies that join us. And and I just want to say wherever you are, God knows your situation. Yeah. He knows how to walk you through the forest, and he knows how to glide you over the rapids and the river. He knows every step of your way, and, and you can trust him. And um, so as we're going through this, what am I supposed to do now? Of course, this is following the series on plain dress and head covering and all of that. And separation. Separation in dress. Yes. Um, I've learned a lot. I've learned yeah. a lot in this study. Yeah. This morning, the Lord was revealing to me some more things, and, and I kept getting distracted. And I always know that if I'm getting very distracted, that's because God has some nugget, and I'm supposed to dig in this other area. So that's what happened this morning. And last week, we were on... Um, let me go back. Um hearing the voice of God, refining our listening skills and learning how to hear the voice of God and see his direction. So today we start um, in John chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. And please, ladies, y'all have been so great lately about I'll lots of comments. Along. Hey, Nicole, it's good to see you, sweet girl. Nicole is a precious, precious Sister in the Lord, local local lady who's starting to homeschool her babies. She's one of my daughters. She's one of. She's one of my daughters. You're adopted. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right. So let's go to John chapter three, <clears throat> verse twenty through twenty-one, and um, as we go through, if you have a question or you want to make a comment, please do. That's how this works. It's not like, oh, I'm going to stand up here and teach you something. Just sharing a Bible study with my sisters and my sweet darling. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Now this is... 
Let me back up just a hair. This was actually part of chasing myself. Um, we're refining our listening skills. Hmm. If we're going to refine our listening skills, the first thing we have to do is listen and be quiet. It's very hard to hear others when there's a thousand voices going on. That's normal around here when all the family is here. There's 16, 18 little ones here talking all the time. I tell you, we have our porch out here with the dining tables out on it. We have to shut the doors when it's lunch time because all the adults sit here at the dining room table and the kids are out there. And even separated, we cannot hear each other because the kids are all nonstop, all of them at the same time. So all of these voices are going on and you may be having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody, but if all of this out here is happening, you, it's hard to zero in. And even if you get the words that are being said, you're not getting the importance of those words. So you have to shut this out. When I was a little girl, we went to Meadowbrook Baptist Church and we were in GA's, Girls in Action. And in GA's, I remember one specific thing that they would always talk about was have a quiet time with the Lord. Now, when you're 10 years old, that's not something that you're probably going to do. But when you get to be an older person, you realize how important it is to have quiet with the Lord so you can listen and hear his word. And in that quiet time is where you find the nuggets. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> so John 3, 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And I wanted to talk about that for a minute. There's so much depth in there. And we all think that none of us do evil. We love God. We are serving him to our, the best of our ability. We don't love evil. We don't want to do evil. And yet, the devil is constantly doing things to draw our attention toward the, the fun of evil. The other question is, what is evil? Hmm. Evil is anything that brings glory to your flesh and does not bring glory to God. Now, when the kids were little, and we, we made our lifestyle changes, that changed everything. It changed especially the TV watching in our home. And Paul put up um, Philippians, is it 3.8? The one, uh, I can give you the exact truth. That was printed and put up on the side of our television, and eventually it got to where... Um, we couldn't watch anything because everything that was coming across that television did not fit. It's Philippians 3.8, I believe. 4.8. 4.8, sorry. Mm -hmm. Will you read that? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. Think on these things. And I think what we did it is we printed it large enough so you could see it all the way across the room, and we highlighted the words true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, virtue, and praise so that everybody in the house could see that side by side with the TV. And after one week, the girls came to us and said, We can't watch anything. <laughs> And, I, and I'm serious. They said, Daddy, there's nothing we can watch. And I said, based on what? They said, based on that scripture you just posted. Because it wouldn't be of good report or it wouldn't be lovely or it wouldn't be true. Or there would be something. And that really says a lot that a child can filter what they're looking at. And, I, and very often I would see them watch something for 10 seconds and pick up the remote and say, nope. And so after a while, we quit watching TV. We did. <coughs> we did. We watch we watch movies, YouTube, things like that now that we choose 
but um, we probably even need to go back and review that again yeah. for ourselves, even though we're empty nesters. You know, it's easy to slide back into old habits. Um, but everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. And in verse 21 it says, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light. And I locked in to the word doeth or do, D-O, whatever other translations say. Think about that for a minute. We all know what it means to do evil. How do you do truth? Hmm. You ever thought about that? How do you do truth? We think of truth as an abstract concept. Uh, I don't even know the word to call it. But we don't think about doing truth. But we all know how to do evil. That's true. Your brow is becoming furrowed, so are you I'm pondering about that? <laughs> how you would really put that into action. Yeah. How do you put per it? Performing, living. Yes. Acting. God's children, first of all, let's go back to verse 20, lest his deeds should be reproved. God's children need to have a teachable spirit. So if you join a Bible study and you're joining with a concept of questioning, you don't have a teachable spirit. If you join um, with an idea to learn something, teachable spirit. Or if you have a need in your life and you're joining in Bible study for exhortation or comfort or encouragement, teachable spirit. Anytime you come to a situation and you automatically have an agenda in mind, you're not going to receive anything. But if you come at it with an open heart, open thinking, um, that's a teachable spirit. And so that's something I wanted to point out here. Um, but in verse 21, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Doeth evil is easy. The word doeth in our King James Version is, is the uh, Aramaic or Greek word. Poio. Poio. P-O-I-E-O. -E it is a reference to a single act. A single act. Like if I pick up this cup. I do that. You're doing tea. I do it. I pick it up, a single act. But you can also have proso, P-R-A-S-S-O, proso, which is a long-term doing, a long-term act, not just a single moment <coughs> in time, okay? And I, as I was studying these words, I said, Father, help me understand what you're saying here. If I do a single act that is a sin, it's easy to recognize and quickly repent and not do it anymore. That's, the, that's what repent means, to do, not go back. Don't do it again. Change. So I, if I'm going to make have any act of sin, if I do any sin or evil in my life, I need to quickly recognize what I have done and move away from it. Do evil. Father, forgive me. Move on. But if you proso, if you continue to walk in sin over and over, it becomes a part of your life. It becomes a part of your life. Mind, your will, your emotions, it feeds that hunger within you and you become almost addicted to it. And there's, there's so many things nowadays that I look at and I see Christians doing and it breaks my heart because they have stepped over from do evil to proso evil, they long term, and will not recognize that they are feeding something. And I think about the curse that is on families of addictions and things like that, mm. that 
you know, well, his daddy was an alcoholic, so we're not surprised he is too. What a sad thing. Yeah. But that comes from that living that evil mm -hmm. and passing it down, being a curse. The Bible says we're redeemed from the curse. We don't have to walk in that anymore. But we have a choice to listen to our flesh. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a misconception about it because a lot of people say, devil made me do it. You know what? The devil can't make us do a single thing. He can hold that temptation up there, but he can't make you do anything. Mm. Once you're born again, you're no longer a slave to sin. That's right. That's what my message was on Sunday. Mm-hmm. You're no longer bound and tied. You have freedom. Not freedom to sin, freedom from sin. And this is all part of refining our listening and looking and listening to the deeper issues. It's not just, well, I like that and there's nothing wrong with that and God doesn't hate that. Well, follow it all the way to the end. And Paul says that all the time. Follow that thought process all the way to the end. We talked about during um, our study of separation and dress. If God doesn't care what you wear, why not put on a thong bikini and go grocery shopping? He doesn't care. It doesn't matter to him. Ah, but since he does care, at what level, at what point? Yeah. And I think I've shared with y'all before, um, during one of the graduation ceremonies for the girls, um, the minister that we had speaking, he was talking about, he was talking about, you know, their future and, and making decisions for their future. And he had a big board behind him, and he started at one end coloring, shading with um, black. And it got a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. And at the other end, it was white, so black to white. And he said, okay, where in that line of, of color of shading did we go from black to white? And it was impossible to, to say. No one could answer that question because it was so gradual and so delicate, the shift, that you could not put your finger on the spot and say, okay, this is where it changed. And the same way from white to black, you cannot point, if you're sliding toward ungodliness or evil or anything that does not bring glory to the Lord, you can't stop at one point and say, okay, that's where it started. Because in James, we learn that it starts in our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We all have ugly thoughts. That's why we have to work to make our thoughts obedient to Christ. All of those things affect us. But the whole time this is happening, within us, the Holy Spirit is there. And if we are listening, he will prompt you when you're stepping over the line. Mm. Well, you know, with me, I know. I struggle all the time. I've told y'all this is a joke now about chocolate. It, oh, I actually heard on the news the, or something the other day about this lady said that her grandma was like 98 years old. And she ate a half pound chocolate bar every day. <laughs> a half pound chocolate bar Wasn't every day. A, I couldn't afford a half pound of chocolate. I know, but I can't. I don't know what the woman looked like. But I thought to myself, when I get to be ninety eight years old, I'm going to eat a half pound of chocolate. I can't do that now because it destroys me. In in my diabetes and being overweight, all those <laughs> things can't do it. My point being. You don't start out with a half pound of chocolate. You start out with a little Hershey's Kiss. And then it builds and it builds and it builds and builds until you, you crave chocolate. And I do. I have to just pretty much not eat chocolate. I have some sugar-free chocolate things, but even those you have to do sparingly for other reasons. But if you find you yourself being drawn... You're listening to your flesh. You're listening to that appetite that is developed in you. And when you feel yourself being literally sucked into doing those things that don't bring glory to the Lord, you have to recognize that. Refine your listening skills and pull back and turn the other way. 
when we st when I started to do keto, I had to take everything out of this hot house that was carb. All the noodles, all the potatoes, all the bread, all the crackers, all the cookies, and my beautiful husband was so supportive, and he didn't gripe or complain, and I only bought him like honey buns and oatmeal cream pies, which I cannot stand either one, so, so I wasn't tempted, but he likes them, so I was able to provide for him, but for me, I couldn't even allow it in the house. I was listening to the Holy Spirit's guidance about what needed to be included in my life. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I know I'm doing more talking than scripture reading, and I apologize. And Yoshana said something, but I have no idea what. It's hard Terry because it's said, white text yeah. on my white shirt. In my past, I was living in evil that became an addiction, and while being a believer, or at least thinking I was when I was almost living a double life, I understand, girl. Uh, she said, I um, saw a lady the other day in a jumper, like athletic thing, looked look like it was made out of pantyhose. <laughs> wow. Um, how do we get people, especially our families, to see this line from black to white, white to black? Everyone else chooses just to shoot the messenger. I understand. Um, and, you know, Sha said some of my girls have slipped into yoga and stuff to work out and stretch, taking care of the temple. I know it's dangerous. It is. You know, we actually did a little bit of <laughs> yoga years ago. Actually, one of the girls started doing that, and it played Christian music and all of that. And I have to say, I, told, I said, please don't do that. Do something else. There's a thousand other things you can do besides yoga. Um but you have refined your listening skills in these areas, Yoshana, and we can't be God for anybody. We just have to pray for them. They get mad when we put that word out there. They get mad when we say anything corrective. But all you can do is speak in love. You know in your being whether or not you're speaking in love. And you're going to get rejected. Sorry. I, I, hate, to I, say, I hate to say it, but you are. If you, if you show up at um, a party... Let's say a prom, a high school prom, and all the girls are in four-inch dresses. Um, the ones that are not four inches have a split up the side, and there's someone that shows up in a modest dress, long dress that's beautiful, but it covers her. Or if you show up at the beach, everyone else is in string bikinis showing way more than they should, and you show up in a swimsuit, which Angie's got one that covers her and it goes down to her knees. It's a, it's a quote unquote modest swimwear. People will start thinking about what they're doing. You know, That's a good point. They will, they will observe you and they will begin to think about their own life. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll get mad at you because you Well, you won't have to say a life. word, but you can just simply do what you're supposed to be doing. And every, yes, everybody may get mad at you, but you, when you do that, you're making a statement, you're being a witness. Uh, I've, I've told on Angie's studies before about how our family would go in somewhere, we would hear fighting or, or whatever going on. We, we would have women that you know had more showing than they should hear, and they would start covering it up. Mm -hmm. Because of being in front of us, they would start. I've seen them put take their purse and cover up here to talk to us because they realized that was offensive. And we didn't say do that, cover that up. I have taken my hat when we've been at festivals, and I've had some women that had way too much showing, and I would she would be talking to me, and I'd hold my hat up, and then she would start covering like this. So that it makes it clear when you're living right in whatever area that hey, this person's not doing like the rest of the world. Maybe I shouldn't either. It's a good testimony just it to is. live what you're supposed to be living. You don't have to say anything a lot of times. A lot of times. <laughs> but if necessary, use words. That's right. right? <laughs> um, let me share with you the definition word of do with or do, do evil, do truth. To make, produce, shoot forth, prepare, cause, to make, to do, carry out, execute, celebrate, keep, make ready, perform. And the word prosa that I was saying was the long-term doing. 
to exercise, undertake, accomplish, commit, perpetrate, to act, perform habitually. When we do with the truth, that's a long-term commitment. Mm. You may do evil and, and repent quickly, but we want to do with truth. Um, Paul and I made our lifestyle and, and, and spiritual changes back in 2000, maybe 2001. Mm -hmm. um, so about 20 years ago, and it took us a, a period of time to get to where we are right now. But even that was at least 17 or 18 years ago. It maybe took two years to fully make our changes. And some of those changes actually were because the girls suggested the changes. And um, I know our daughter, Sarah, at one time, we just, we just, we had like four or five different styles of apron and we'd make aprons in different colors. And, and Sarah, one day, I, I believe we were, was right after church. She said she felt like she was going to move uh, to an all all black aprons at all times. And she said she just felt like she wanted it to be a little more uniform. She felt uncomfortable with all the different varieties that we had. And, and you know, we all agreed that that was a very good decision. But that's just the dress part of our changes. We've also, during that time, to try and walk as much in holiness as we could begin to think about all the other aspects don't get her wrong it's not just the clothing stuff oh, that she's it, talking that's about the least. it was it was things like um we would sit down and say how are how is our family ministering to the community how who are we touching outside our home outside our family and we began to adopt uh the elderly that we had a a a lady that lived about a mile down the road from us, and we ministered to her and picked her up for church. We brought her to our Thanksgiving meals. Well, we she wasn't and, the only one. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, I'm just giving an example. Yeah. Um, until she passed away, we we took care of her. Um, actually, Angie was the one that went over there right before she passed and was able to call 911 because she had gotten really bad. She would, she would have, it would have been someone would have, found her deceased because we was kept in touch with her and she was bad, bad sick. But anyway, my point is not just the clothing changes, but every, every area of our walk, we have tried to really super focus on how to please God and how to really minister to people. Serve his church. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, we went to the nursing home for years. We um, just ministering to people in our community. One of the blessings that we've been able to do in our heritage crafts, we do a lot of heritage crafts and uh, have a lot of skills in that area. And whenever we demonstrate or are at an event, that is prime ministry time. You, you'd be amazed at how many, I would say hundreds, if not thousands of people that we've been blessed to stop and, and that have come to us and said, hey, I see what you're doing. Can you just kind of explain? And all of that is using, doing the truth. I don't know of anything in our life that we have done that we felt like God called us to do that we've ever been embarrassed to do. No. I mean, at the beginning, I was embarrassed to go out without my makeup, but that was easy, you know. I have, a, I have to... And I don't want to tell it here because we'll take up your Bible study time, but I, I could tell you a story about how my family taught me about um, ministering to the elderly. And of course, now I am one, but <laughs> you know what I mean? When I was probably mid-40s and they was going to the nursing home and I, I had an event uh, or, or an, what, would, what was the word? I had an experience that yeah. really changed me. And I'll, I'll tell that sometime. But that that's a good point, though, because God is going to give you those opportunities when you're willing to do that work. Um, Paul and I were talking this morning about, and I was asking him a question, um, 
where are you the happiest? What is the thing that you do? And I was asking, I said, when do you think that I'm the most happy? When am I the most satisfied, the most blessed, the most happy? And he said, when you're teaching young women. And I do love that. I love to teach people how to make bread, how to sew, how to do all of this stuff. And I, I love that. It is a joy to me because I feel like I'm doing what the Bible called me to do. And so you have to say, okay, Father, I want to do truth. I want my life to speak truth. How do I do that best? Um, refining your listing skills. Now, I wanted to go back to where he says... Verse 20, lest his deeds be reproved. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds be reproved. Those that do ungodliness, and I say ungodliness, I'm not talking about horrible, horrible, wicked, evil, perverted, nasty, all the bad, bad, bad stuff we think about. We always put sin at different levels, don't we? But whenever we are doing something that does not bring glory to God, then it is ungodly. I'm just going to say that. If you're not bringing glory to God, then you are doing the ungodly. Um, they don't like it when a light shines because his deeds get reproved. Reproved means refuted, exposed, corrected, called to account, chastened, by conviction brought to light. And I heard that when I was reading that out of the Strong's Concordance, I heard this <coughs> collective scream, judge not! Judge not! The only people who want to yell judge not are people who are being reproved in their spirit. It's not about judging. It's love to be reproved. When you are making an error in godliness and you want correction, then your heart is right and you will receive that correction you will move forward. When you are walking in ungodliness and you don't want a light shined at you, you scream judge not. Um, Ephesians 5.11 And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now, that's any work of darkness. It's not necessarily talking about a person, although a person is included in that. If there is a person who is relishing their role in unfruitful works of darkness, reprove them. He doesn't tell us, make them happy or make them pleased. And one of the sisters that watches on Bible study, we were talking about this the other day. Um, she said, I just don't know what else to say. And my, my response was, there's nothing else you can say. Once you've presented the truth, once you've given the truth, sometimes you just have to let it stay there and let the Holy Spirit do the work. It may take years. The point is, you love them, therefore you want them to have a better situation eternally. And sadly, folks don't realize that when you walk in evil, when you walk in ungodliness, whether or not you post a million scriptures, it's not truth. I've had uh, silk flowers. We have a, the garden cottage and... In the spring, before everything starts blooming, I always get these beautiful little tulip and azalea silk flowers. And I put them in the little window box. It's If you get close, you know, it's just so fake looking. But it looks pretty from a distance. And I always want a little bit of color in the spring. And, um, and I think about that all the time. We want to show something great. Even if it's not there. The difference is, are you working? Are you continuing forward to produce that true and beautiful thing? Do you understand what I mean by that? I'm not saying that we should all be presenting some fake facade, but 
it's natural to want to look your best, to show your best, but let's make it the real thing. Let's be functioning and growing in the truth. And that brings it forth to everybody. I could tell some stories right now about when I was a teenager, but I won't. Revelation 319. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. This is the words of Almighty God. <clears throat> love is not human. Love is supernatural. And the love that we assign or the, the attributes that we assign to love are oftentimes human attributes that have nothing to do with godliness. That's a good point. They are not agape love. They are not even filio love. They are, and then, you know, there's eros, which is the romantic love between a husband and wife. There's filio, which is brotherly love. And, and then there's agape love. And everybody says, that's the one. That's the unconditional love. Well, let me tell you something. You can love somebody with a human, mentally agape love, but you're still not loving them like the Lord does unless you say whatever it takes to bring them to the cross. Mm. If it takes suffering to bring them to the cross, I love you. I've had to pray that prayer many times. There were times when there was such um, pain that accompanied love. It, it was just almost unbearable. But God is willing that his own son die on that cross after being tortured, murdered, and beaten. Did God love Jesus? Yes. He stood back and watched his son be tortured. Well, he's not very loving. Look, what, he's, he could stop that right now. What about Stephen when he was stoned? Yes. God could have stopped that. Well, God's not very loving. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We look at it with our human perspective. Refine your listening skills to, to hear exactly what God is saying to us. Do, are we worried about the temporal? That we don't want anybody sad or pitiful or don't feel bad honey we love you we'll love you right into hell because we don't want you to feel bad i'm sorry ladies that's not what god's called us to as many as i love i rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent listen to what god is saying listen to him if, if he is calling you to something that is vastly uncomfortable, why? Why? Is it to perfect his love in you? Is it to bring you to a new place? You're quiet. I'm listening. Okay. And I saw some comments. Courtney. Hey, Courtney. Love you, girl. Okay. We're going back to verse 6 of... Let me back up a little Second bit. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is going back to where we were I'll last week. i that. Maybe we should just read that section again so we're not jumping in from a weird place. Sorry. <coughs> Um, this is where we were for discern the times, and we were in 2 Tim Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read down and then hit verse 6. You want it right here? No, I want it right here in my Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, 
despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. <clears throat> Verse 6. For of these sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust. Go ahead and read the next one. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We are going through this whole passage because it was, it was what shall I do now, discerning the times. <clears throat> and now we're in refining our listening skills. If we read all of that, if we go through 2 Timothy verse chapter 3, right? Yes. 2 Timothy chapter 3, you read all of that previous that Paul just read for this sort. All of that whole list for this sort. All of those that are I'll put my paper down again. Oh, there's a whole bunch. Lovers of their own selves. Well, that's not me because I don't like who I am. <laughs> I think I'm just awful. I'm always feeling bad about myself. I have terrible anxiety. I'm not a lover of myself. We are all lovers of ourselves, ladies. If we weren't, we would, we would just commit suicide, ultimately, because we wouldn't want to live. Refine those skills to determine where the loving of yourself is proper and improper. Hmm. I love myself because God saw something in me worth keeping. So I want to be the best me that I can be to serve him. I don't want to die years early because I refuse to take care of my body. I don't want to leave my family before it's time for me to go. I love that I have the ability to be a blessing. I want my grandchildren to have a granny to know what that's like. My children didn't have much of a granny to know what that's like. Um, I want them to have a pawpaw, and I want their pawpaw to be happy. I want my children to know what God's love is and the truth of it. So I'm going to do my best to share that love with my children. And I believe we've been very successful in that. Mm -hmm. I want to be a blessing in the community, not because I think I'm so great, but because I know what I have found in Jesus is of great value. And I want to present that the best way I can. But when I go over the top, and I say, look at me, I've got it all made. I'm the one with all the information. I'm a visionary. I can see everything. No, 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 no. You're loving yourself. You're loving yourself. Don't go from the white to the black without realizing where you're changing. Covetous, wanting, all the time wanting. People posting every food item on the internet. Oh, I got to make that. I got to make that. I got to buy this. I got to buy that. Oh, she looks so cute. I got to do this. I got to do that. Covetous, wanting everything. Boasters, proud, blasphemers. Blasphemers. We wouldn't dare be a blasphemer. What is a blasphemer? I went over this a few weeks ago. I'm sorry. I was looking Would you up share, something else. Share with them what a blasphemer is. A uh, blasphemer is someone who speaks against the works of the Lord, the works of the Holy Spirit, uh, speaks ill on his name, lives a lie, even if you're not speaking it, living a life that is blasphemous against God. Yes. Not giving honor and glory to the Lord God and saying that what is of God is not of God. Um, disobedient to parents. We talked about that. How do you honor parents who are have not been honorable? How do you walk in honor to parents? Um, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. Of this sort, these here have crept into houses. Now, let me tell you something. 
Sarah, who was it bought us that new TV, or did we buy it? Yes, Sarah did. As, as a present? Yes. She got us a new a new television, but you know, we don't have we don't have cable and all that business. Is cable even there anymore? Not Satellite. Really. We don't have any of that. But on this new television, you can get on certain channels or stations, yeah, there are not stations. Channels. You yeah. can click on those things to watch free things. Now we love documentaries. We were watching one the other night about the archaeology and. They were talking about an earthquake that occurred during the crucifixion. During the crucifixion, they tracked this earthquake down to 33 A.D. It was April third. They actually 3rd. got an exact date for this earthquake that hit Jerusalem. Anyway, we love stuff like that. We just love watching stuff like that. Although I think we ended up not liking how that was done, but, um, but. As we're as you're going through, we haven't figured out how that whole thing works. But every now and then, there'll be something pop up there, and I'm telling you, it, it's horrible. It, it's so horrible, my mind can't even go there. And I, I many times he would be clicking, trying to get to something we were wanting to see, and I just had to put my head down because the horrible images that were flashing up there. That's why we don't watch TV. Um. But that's how these things creep into houses. There were commercials. There were advertisements. Commercials. Yeah. But I remember back in the 80s, I believe it was the 80s, the show 2020, which was a new show, came on. I think it was ABC. And mm -hmm. I used to love to watch 2020. It was investigative reporting. And they were talking about this new drug that was being used out in California was killing people. And as I was watching it, I thought, well, thank the Lord, that's not here in Alabama. And that drug that they had just found on the streets was called crack. Guess what? It got to Alabama. And now it's passe, I guess. All the other stuff, fentanyl and all that stuff is now prevalent. But at the time, I thought, oh, I'm so glad that's not here. I'm so glad it's not happening here. I'm sorry that it's happening out there. And how ridiculous, because that image had just creeped into my, my home. And at the time, I guess I was just a silly woman watching that stuff. Well, that's what it's silly women mean. That's what I was looking up. It means foolish woman. Uh, a woman that allows things to come into their home. And and think about what's allowed to come into the young children that are watching. We sit them in front of the television to watch all of this fantasy, magic, um, princesses, and, and all of this stuff. And over time, the messages get into their little spirit. And I have to interject something here. Our daughter's are probably more strict on what they don't allow and allow their children to do and mm -hmm. watch than we were with them, which is wonderful because so many times if you set your children, raise your children up with a certain standard, then they will, they'll say, well, mom and dad told us these 10 rules, but only seven of them apply. These other three are not that important. And they'll raise their children with seven of the rules. And then if their children are more liberal then they'll say well mom and dad raises with these seven tenants and before you before a few generations nobody has any standards but our children i'm proud to say have some of them they have some of them they have um and we was talking about this a couple of days ago uh just as an example the wizard of oz when angie and i was children that came on every spring we watched it we thought it was wonderful uh we didn't have color television so we couldn't see the big moment when everything went to color. <laughs> it looks the same to us. But my point was we, we grew up with that, not thinking anything about it. But they won't let their children watch it because it's got witches in it. And magic. And magic. And, you know, things in there that even though it's a, it's a novel and it um, was a classic and all that, they're not to that point. Now, they may at some point uh, allow that. That's their, their choosing. But I, I respect any family that doesn't do that. Now, a lot of people in the world would say, how dare you? 
deny your children that your children are your control and that they're your responsibility. And I say, how dare you allow your children to watch some of this stuff that's in the world? Mm, we could tell much you, worse. We could tell you horror stories. If you was here around the table and we wasn't on live broadcast, we could tell you horror stories of some things that's happened to children, um, horrible well, sins they may and crimes. Well, know more than we do. Yes, yeah, I'm sure you, you do. But, yes. Um, Bad really, stuff. But we that's, haven't gotten very far today, have But we? that's letting that sort creep into your house. Don't be foolish. Don't let the world slowly but surely creep further into your house. Um, and it, led, it says, led silly women captive, laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. We use that word lust, and most of us, when we think of lust, we think of like some perverted sexual thing. That's not all lust is. It can be referring to lots of different things, and we don't want to create that hunger for what is essentially filth. But we don't think of it as filth because all that's cute or that's fun or it's just fantasy and imagination. Refine your listening skills. Think about what the Holy Spirit would be saying to you. It's amazing how we will cut off one area and think, well, we're not doing that. But then we just slide right on past something else. That just, it's illogical. And it doesn't work when you're when you're seeking the will of God in your life. I was looking at a, a YouTube a Bible study YouTube by a lady the other day who is a plain person. She had double piercings in her ears. Every finger had rings on it. Um, she had on a plain dress and a little scarf head covering. And I was watching it, and I I just. I just had to shift, and so I, I looked at another one that she had done. And the next one, she's got on a V-neck shirt going way down past where the camera's showing. And she's full makeup, still got her little lacy head covering on. And I'm thinking, this is messing with my brain. I can't handle the dichotomy. It's not. Sounds like a double-minded person. It me. is, and I'm thinking, Lord, Please help me, help me, Father. Help me to do better in my walk. Help me to do better. Help me to be steady and sure. And and, and that's one thing I want to say about my wife. When something like that is observed, she doesn't start to cast judgment. She immediately comes to me and said, am I like that? that and I appreciate that in her. She's not... She doesn't say, well, look at them. They're just foolish. Well, look at them. They're just living in sin. It breaks her to, to down to a self-awareness where she says, she says, honey, I just saw this. Am I doing that too? Well, my thinking is even the people that are doing these things, they don't, they can't know that they're doing it. So we have compassion. Say, listen. My sweet darling, do you recognize that this is happening? I want somebody to say that to me. Angie, I love you. Do you know that you're doing this? And I want to correct whatever is not of God. I don't want to be ungodly. I don't want to be serving my flesh. So I try to give the benefit of that thinking to anyone. They don't realize what they're doing. And I, and I think that's the difference between being a silly woman who just whatever, 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 and being a strong daughter of the king and, and standing for what's right and wanting to improve what you're doing in your life. And I don't know if y'all remember, last year we were talking about raising children and, and one of the sisters has got, well, more than one of the sisters has got some children that have gone very astray. And, um, and you know, we were talking about it and there was lots of comments going through and, and one thing I said was, you can't go back and undo whatever was before, but you can change from right now to day, this moment. You can make a commitment. You can do paseo. You can do truth from this moment on. Even if you've totally fouled up before, start from this moment on and do truth. 
and teach truth to your children. And people will begin to recognize the truth that's in you. Um, verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And I did not look up that word knowledge, but I want to say that a lot of times in Scripture, the word knowledge means actually becoming one with the truth. It's, he's going to look it up for me. Um, you know, in, in Hebrew, knowledge was marital Intimacy, you become one. Right there in the, near the bottom. The precise. A precise and correct knowledge. Uh, knowledge of things ethical and divine. Absolute. We want to function in that knowledge. I'm a master gardener, but I tell you what, right now, if you came out to my garden, you would never know that. But then at certain times of the year, my gardens look stunning. They really do. But Paul and I work very hard at that. And anything that you're going to succeed in, you're going to have to work very hard. There's few spiritual prodigies in this world. In order to function according to the word of God, you've got to pay attention. You've got to listen. And I, I recognize in my own life, the more time I spend in Bible study, the more tearful I become. Mm. Because I recognize and I understand where I fail. And I, I, I spend days just sorrowing over my errors, the places that I didn't do well. And, and I'm not talking about Pharisee kind of doing all the steps of the law. I don't even know what all the steps of the law are, but I know when the Lord is pleased with my actions. I know that when he is pleased with my service and I, I sense the Holy Spirit prompting me even more to do more. He never says, oh, just back off. Don't worry about it. Don't just back off. Never. He's never said that to me in my spirit, not audibly. They which creep into houses, they were not forced into the houses. Back in the, in the time when the early church was beginning, Christians were forced into their homes for fear of persecution. They did not spend time out on the streets. They stayed in their houses to keep away from the attack that would come, the absolute physical attack that would come. Um... They, Christians often were persecuted, but they of choice crept into houses to insinu insinuate themselves into the affections and good opinion of people and to draw them over to their way of thinking. That's, that's the beginning of this chapter. They want more people to join them in being lovers of self. Well, well, you're just beautiful, honey. Let's just go do this and and let's, you know, they want other people to join them in sin. Have you ever heard Misery Loves Company? <laughs> it does. Come on and be here with me. Do what I'm doing. It's a scary thing. Yeah. And if, when you're listening, you will hear what I'm talking about in your life. Really quick, I want to do this next part. I know, we're at 12 o'clock. Verse 8. Uh, now, as Janus, Janes, and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. So, as I was studying this, I wanted to see Janus and Jambres is not actually mentioned in the Old Testament by name, but these are the magicians that came up to refute what Moses and Aaron were doing. Um, they came into the presence of Pharaoh and imitated everything that happened in order to show that they had power too. So I looked up the word Janus, J-A-N-N-E-S, to see what that word means. Because for some reason, the Lord wanted their names written in the New Testament. Hmm. Janus means he vexed, V-E-X-E-D. And if you've ever watched any of Jane Austen's stuff, being vexed means frustrated, irritated, aggravated. He just aggravated what Moses was doing. Jambres means bitter rebel. 
Bitter Rebel. And these are the two things that came into the presence of Pharaoh to refute what Moses and Aaron were saying and doing. They tried to imitate the miracles of God in order to frustrate the acts of God. Now, I want to tell you what I felt the Holy Spirit was telling me. This is not the gospel truth. This is Angie's opinion. Whenever you step out for the Lord, whenever you make that decision to move forward with something that the Lord has shown you to do, there is always going to be somebody that's going to come along and say, you're wrong. You're wrong. What you're doing is not important. It's not valid. God didn't say that. That's not from God. They're going to try to vex you. And they're going to try to cause bitterness and rebellion. So when somebody comes against you. Now I'm not talking about if you are doing something for your flesh. That is absolutely not of God. Not scriptural. If people come against you for that. That's your own doing. But when you're walking with the Lord and you've committed your heart to serve God and to, to perform his word, to do the truth, and you get folks coming against you to vex and to be bitter and rebellious against you, you are standing in the company with Moses and Aaron, mm. the anointed of God, and you just remember that. Again, if you are doing something for yourself, God's not going to step in and stop that. Imagine how Moses and Aaron felt when they went in there thinking, he, he can't deny this. I've got a staff that's going to turn into a serpent. And they said, I got the t-shirt on that. I can do that, you know? I mean, sometimes we think this truth is so clear, everybody will see it. And you, you share the gospel with them or you share this truth with them. And the whole time they're like, uh, are you about through with this? Because I've really got things to do. Yeah. It happens all the time. Right. And it happened all through the word of God. And we clearly know it happened to Jesus. So please don't stress over that. Do what God is showing you to do. And let me, let me say, God is never going to tell you to do something that is going to puff up your flesh. He's not. All of God's word is about the importance of serving God. It's not about serving your flesh. I don't even want to stop there. There's a whole bunch more, but I need to stop. Ladies, I love you. I see that a lot of your commenting has stopped. I hope I haven't blown y'all away with all of that. But life is good without TV, only DVDs. Amen, Lenny. That's what we do mostly. That's right. That's right. We even need to refine those down. Yeah. Well, we did. I did watch a good um, movie or documentary about Paul and Saul and Road to Damascus, and I always watch it kind of cautiously because so many of these things are produced to make Christians fool, look foolish or make the Bible look untrue. Mm -hmm. And this one was actually well done. Um, and it, you know, it was, um, the story was added in of what's in the word of God. They had to have a background story, but it started with Stephen stoning and Paul and Saul was there and they actually did a really good job at it. So I enjoyed that. So you have to, one thing, and I'll, I'll just, Put this in before we leave. It's okay to stop something in the middle. Many years ago, I go into a movie, I'd pay my money, get my ticket, go in to watch a movie. Within the first five minutes, if it was garbage, I didn't get up and leave. It's okay to, if you've thrown away money, let that be a, a cheap lesson. Um, if you start watching a TV show that's no, that's no good, back out. That's something that for years and years I didn't have the wisdom to do. Folks just sit there and keep watching. I know it's like... They think it's going to get better. Yeah, like, I paid my money. <laughs> yeah, it's got some language in it. But, look, you've got better things to do. You've got better people to do them with, you know? Yeah. Just get up and leave. And don't let your mind 
observe that. Um, and let me tell y'all, for all young parents that are watching, you're not robbing your children of anything good nope. by not allowing them to dive into this world's creation of fantasy and all of that. You're not denying your children anything. There are so many other beautiful, wonderful, glorifying of God ways to have fun with your family. And I, I just encourage you, I encourage you with all of my heart, please guide your children away from that stuff. It is not fruitful. It does not bless them. It does not grow them in the Lord. You may think it does, and other people may tell you that it will, but it doesn't. We have an entire society now suffering because of a lot of that. Yes. Living in a fantasy world and having fun with fantasy things. Remember, glitter is not gold. I want the gold. I want the real stuff. I want the diamonds from the Lord and the pearls of great price. Amen. All that glitter and ruffle and all that business, it's just nothing. It's fluff. Right? Amen. We love y'all. Hope y'all have a good week, and I'm still trying to get the uh, Sunday morning message spliced so we can put it on YouTube. But, you know, I, I need to find out if we can, <coughs> even as bad as YouTube probably is, see if we can do live broadcasts on YouTube because I, I, I feel the day coming when Facebook will be in our past. Yeah. It is definitely um, questionable, isn't it? It's becoming a den of devils. But we love y'all, and we don't ever want to lose connection with you guys. So take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next week. We love you, Marion. Bye.